John T. Evans, off to your second badminton after a 10-year gap. But where did the story begin? Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, well, I grew up in North Wales. Um, I ride for Ireland. Um, my, my father's family all came from, from the north of Ireland, actually. Um, but I grew up in Snowdonia in the mountains in North Wales. And um, I suppose I, I was very lucky. My sister and I had an idyllic childhood. Um, horses and, and ponies and the mountains. And um, we were members of the pony club. And... Um, it was uh, great fun. We galloped around a lot. Uh, didn't really do anything resembling dressage. Um, didn't have any flat fields, so uh, our show jump uh, practice was generally over Forest Commission gates on on hardcore roads. Um, and then it kind of it, it, I followed a fairly traditional um, sort of career path from there on. I suppose I was lucky enough to um, I did quite a bit with the pony club. I was I did my A test and. Um, and I went to work uh, with a guy called Chris McGran in Yorkshire. Um, and from there, I did sort of several riding, working people type jobs. Uh, I worked for John Thalwell. And then I did a, a lengthy stint for Andrew Nicholson. Um, and Andrew taught me a, a huge amount, really. Um, he was, uh, he is incredibly hard working and he's a huge role model. Um, he's very fair, he's hard working, um, you know, and to, to my mind, he's probably, you know, one of the greatest event riders and certainly one of the greatest horsemen we've, we've ever seen. Um, and I suppose then, it, it, after I, I finished with Andrew and um, set up my own yard um, in the Cotswolds, and I've sort of been in the Cotswolds ever since, really. Um, and I suppose that's maybe where the story starts, in effect. Um, I started off riding anything that that we could get hold of and anything that people would send and a lot of young horses maybe um naughty horses and and probably not such good horses and um i've always done a lot of teaching um and uh as i've sort of progressed and and got old um i'm lucky enough that the, the caliber of horse i ride now is is significantly different um to the ones i used to ride so I, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. I love riding the horses. I get up every day. My my sort of um, theory is that I need to get up every day and want to get on the horses. And if I want to get on them, then then they're good enough to ride and they're and they're nice horses and they give you the inspiration. So. And which was the first horse that sort of set you on your way? Um, I, I suppose it, it, it's hard to say. I've been involved with a lot of of nice horses. Um, I broke in over to you that Jeanette Breakwell um, went on to, I think she still holds maybe the record for the most uh, championship medals. Um, I broke him in as a four-year-old in, in Yorkshire. Um, What's he like? He was great. You, you kind of always knew, um, you know, his confirmation wasn't great, his movement maybe was average, but his brain was amazing. He was naughty and cheeky and just, he wanted to know what was around the next corner. And, and it was great fun working with him. I, probably worked with him for about a year or so um, before ultimately Je Jeanette then ended up with him. Um, I, I rode a horse called Woodside Ashby that Bettina Hoy then, um, that was then sold and Bettina Hoy rode and I think that still holds maybe the record for the uh, championship dressage. I think he did a 29 at Hareth with Bettina. Uh, but really in terms of my riding I suppose uh, a horse called Craig Warrior um, who I rode at two European Championships and also at badminton in, in 07. Um, so he gave me my first sort of championship, you know, taste of championships. Um, and then at badminton, I'd unfortunately had a fall um, off another horse um, the week before and I had a, a damaged bone in my hip. Um, and Craig Warrior, um, on pretty awful ground actually, carried me round. Um, he jumped a clear round, did a um, 49 dressage and carried me around the cross country. Um, and I, I still I still get tearful if I go on about him. He's, he's, he was just, he had a heart of gold. Um, Deborah and Martin too good owned him and um, a lot of people helped me at the time with him. And he maybe wasn't the most talented horse, but it sort of gave me... Um, it gave me a chance and it also, you know, it puts your name out there and, and he absolutely, he tried his heart out and you can, you can never thank them enough for that.
And talking of injuries, you've you've had thrills, but you've had plenty of spills. I mean, you're pretty broken to pieces, aren't you? Just um, run us through what you've what you've bashed and broken. Oh Jonathan. dear, the list is is quite lengthy. Um, he says, feeling his back a bit. Um, <laughs> um, I've I've broken a, a double figures of ribs, um, both collarbones, um, my pelvis um, in four places. Um, punctured and collapsed lungs um, I think maybe the odd leg and things like that in there as well but um, that I sort of had two main falls uh, I suppose that, that squashed me and they're the difficult ones when you when you get squashed it's hard to then get your body back together and so on um, uh, and then I also had a, um, a bleed on my brain which uh, I was bucked off in the school um, fairly innocuous fall actually um, but whacked the back of my head, had a, uh, I had a hat on and everything, and, um, and had a bleed on my brain, which stopped my right leg working. And, and that was actually arguably, arguably probably the most frightening because you don't really know. The consultants couldn't say. Uh, my right leg didn't work for five or six days, and um, the consultants say, we don't know if it will work. Um, and that's, the, that's quite scary. Um, I was very well looked after at, at, at French Hay um, at the brain injury rehab unit and uh, learned to walk properly again and, and, I mean, effectively rode quite soon afterwards. So it sort of came good, um, but it was a bit nerve-wracking at the beginning. But what keeps you going mentally? I mean, there must have been moments where you thought, is it worth it? I think on a daily basis, the thing that keeps you going is the interaction with animals that you love working with. I... I absolutely love the feeling of it going well. I love the feeling of training a horse to do something. Um, we've got, I think, four or five-year-olds in the yard at the moment. Uh, two of them we got just before Christmas. Two of them have only just come. Um, all four of them are lovely horses, uh, but the two that we've had since sort of Christmas time are just about ready for their first event. Well, compared to the two that arrived from Ireland the other day, these two feel like Rolls Royces. They know how to canter on the right leg. They can jump a jump, you know. They feel like absolute, you know, cream of the crop. Um, and that, they're only sort of, I don't know, three months, four months maybe ahead of the other two. But it, it's really fascinating having those four all the same age, but not at the same stage. And in in a in a few months, the other two will be there as well. And it, and it's um, it's that um, it's that that keeps me going um, more than anything, I guess. And it, and it's at every level. The um, Cooley Rourke's Drift, who who's my top horse now, um, he's so talented and has so much ability um, that you go to places you're not used to being. Um, and um, that is really inspirational. And as we're talking about Cooley Rourke's Drift, I mean, tell us a little bit more. Did you start this horse? Um, it, not quite. Uh, Fiona Elliott and Anne Nobbs, mother and daughter team, they, they own him. And Fiona and Anne bought him at the Going for Gold sale um, in, in Ireland as a four-year-old at the end of his fourth year and Fiona rode him in some of the five-year-old classes and um, then uh, she broke down on the Foss Way which is just up the road and I was driving past so um, normally you know normally you kind of put your head the other way and pretend your lorry's full and don't stop do you? <laughs> um, so I, I was turning off so I thought I've got to stop um, so I stopped um, put the horses on the lorry and um, brought them back and they got their lorry pulled home and that's how we kind of met really um, and then Fiona became pregnant and started a family and um, I was lucky enough to be asked to ride um, Art and um, in, in the first instance I was going to ride him for a year and she would have him back um, luckily he's stayed <laughs> What a story. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one, that. <laughs> what is it about him that makes him so special? He has a, he has a great canter, a great walk. He has a very good jump. Um, he has... Uh, his trot has developed and improved uh, beyond anything I thought that was possible. Um, but without doubt, his standout feature is his brain. Um, he, uh, he, he wants to do the job and he loves it. Um, at Rio at the Olympics last year, um, he 
we, I went into the show jumping that you jump two rounds at the Olympics and um, I jumped, went in to jump the first round and um, my sister, bless her, who had come to support, had spent the, um, the entire week or, or the two days of dressage trying to keep the Brazilians quiet because you cantered in down the centre line and the Brazilians all applauded. They didn't quite get the concept of dressage. So um, she was trying to keep them quiet. So when I went into the ring, she, you know, she was going shh like this and I went, to the most densely populated bit of the crowd and whoop them up a bit because I know that Art, um, he goes in there and he thinks everyone's come to watch him. Um, he loves it and the more noise and the more excitement, uh, the more he'll perform. Um, and that makes a horse to me very, very special.